the World Trade Center in Boston, usually the site of major trade shows like Macworld and other computer shows. But we're here today to bring you the second half of the second annual Computer Bowl, sponsored by the Computer Museum. We'll find out today once and for all whether the guys from the Silicon Valley or the gentlemen from the Route 128 area here in Boston know more about computer trivia. At halftime, the East was winning. Can the West catch up? We'll find out in just a few minutes as we bring you the conclusion of Computer Bowl II on the special edition of the Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by the Software Publishers Association, which reminds you that software piracy is a federal offense. When a few people steal software, everyone loses. Additional funding is provided by CompuServe, by PC Connection and Mac Connection, by Byte Magazine and Bix, the Byte Information Exchange, and by Intel Corporation, Personal Computer Enhancement. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffee. This is Gary Kildall, and we're playing computer trivia here. This is a game I picked up in the gift shop at the Computer Museum of Boston. Okay, if you throw the dice, Gary, uh, okay. then I'll figure out what question I have right. to ask you. So I've got a one. Okay, it's a history right. question. Okay. All right. Who introduced the first commercially available microcomputer? Trong Trong T, Thomas Watson, Bill Gates, or a guy named Gary Kildall? <laughs> well, no, it wasn't me. No, okay. it wasn't Bill. And if I remember correctly, uh, Thomas Watson started IBM. So it must be the first guy. <laughs> it actually is. Uh, a French Vietnamese named Trong Trong T in 1973, the first uh, microcomputer. All, right, All right, go ahead, throw me a okay. question. Uh, All right. Let's see. All right, it is uh, hardware. Okay. Uh, with what microprocessor did the Z80 compete most directly? The 8008, the 8080? The F8 or the 6502? Well, it's either one of the first two, and I would say the second one, the 8080. Intel's 8080. Okay, <laughs> not too bad. We had to play this game. All right, Gary, we're going to go to the computer bowl in a minute where the West Coast team is facing mm -hmm. the East Coast team. And, and last year I asked Esther Dyson, what's the difference between the computer guys on the East and the West? She said on the East Coast they wear white socks, and the West Coast they don't wear socks. <laughs> okay. You have a more serious answer to that question. Is there a cultural difference between those two communities? Well, I think Esther's not really too far off in that answer, <laughs> actually, because there's, there's more a formal presentation, I would guess, uh, from the East Coasters, um, they, they come from the, uh, let's say, the mini computer background, yeah. the deck background, data general, right. and so forth, and you see a lot of that in the designs and the software and so on. But, but realistically, there's really not that much difference in the culture anymore. You, there's so much uh, communication through magazines and uh, just everybody getting right, together at right, various right. conferences that uh, the cultural differences are really insignificant. Well, we'll see if there are knowledge differences today as we find out whether the West Coast team or the East Coast team knows more about computer trivia. We'll be back with part two of the Computer Bowl from the World Trade Center in Boston in just a moment. Presented by the Computer Museum, we're here at the Boston World Trade Center. We've played two rounds so far, and the score is the East Coast 120, the West Coast 110. Let me explain. Something happened during the break. Our judges made a decision that the West Coast did answer correctly that question about the three companies in which the uh, CEOs had moved, and Adam Osborne was accepted as a correct answer. We adjusted the score, so it is now 110 for the West, 120 for the East. Now, for those of you who are just joining us and didn't see the first part of this program, let me reintroduce our expert panelists. For the defending champion East Coast team, William Foster of Stratus Computer, Robert Frankston, of Lotus Development Corporation, Mr. Pat McGovern of IDG, Edward Fredkin from Boston University, and Russell Planitzer from Prime Computer. <laughs> Our challengers from the West Coast, West Coast, Stuart Alsop II, publisher of PC Letter, Bill Gates of Microsoft. Come on, let's cheer for these West Coast guys, too. <laughs> the captain of the West Coast team, venture capitalist John Doerr. Lawrence Tesler from Apple and Charles House from Hewlett Packard. <laughs> Our judges again are Bill Paduska of Stardent Computer and Bill Joy of Sun Microsystems. Our examiner, the bad boy of Computer Bowl One, Mitch Caper of On Technology. All right, 120 to 110, a very close game. Mitch, let's get back to the questions. 
For 10 points, in 1968, the New York Stock Exchange listed its first computer software company. What was the name of that? All right, East Coast McGovern. Cullinate. That is not correct. You answered too I'll soon. We can it. repeat the question. 20 points for the West if you get it. In 1968, the New York Stock Exchange listed its first computer software company. What was the name of that company? Please buzz and let me recognize who's going to answer this one. This is not consulting. Stuart Alsop. Cullinane Systems. That's not correct. The answer, Computer Sciences Corporation. <laughs> Next question, Mitch. According to the Illustrated Handbook of Desktop Publishing, what is the opposite of letter spacing? West Coast, Larry Tesler. Word spacing. East Coast. Frankston. Kerning. Kerning is correct. <laughs> 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 Next question. The Mayans were pretty good mathematicians. They developed their own numbering system, but it was not a base 10 system. Okay, West Coast, Larry Tesler. It lacked the zero. That's not the correct answer. You interrupted. We'll get to ask. Let's ask, ask the full he, question he's first. Buzzed. Well, no, they're, they're entitled okay. to hear the full question. The Mayans were pretty good mathematicians. They developed their own numbering system, but it was not a base 10 system. What was their numbering system based on? Was it 5, 12, or 20? Pat McGovern, you've committed. 20. 20 is the right answer. <laughs> 20 points for the East Coast team. <laughs> Here we go. According to Electronic Learning Magazine, as of 1988, which of the following states required public school children to take at least one computer course before graduating from high school? Texas, Massachusetts, or California? All right, East Coast Frankston? Texas. Texas is correct. In 1971, the first home video game console was marketed using a patent originally granted to Sanders Associates. The company that sold the game was Magnavox. What was the name of the game? East Coast McGovern? Odyssey. It's correct. <laughs> Ten points for the <laughs> At the 1939 New York World's Fair, the Westinghouse Pavilion featured a robot that could do housework. What was the name of that robot? <laughs> Who is old enough to remember? <laughs> Time is up. The answer, Electro. <laughs> Texas Instruments developed the first popular microcomputer-based toy. What was it called? We have West Coast Larry Tesler. Speak and spell. It's correct for 10 <laughs> points. Immediately after the introduction of the IBM PC, the president of Apple Computer and the head of IBM's PC division met for the first time. Where did they meet? <laughs> Who's got an answer? West Coast Stuart Alsop? At a Boston Computer Society. Absolutely name. right. Ten points. <laughs> All right, the score of the East Coast, 170. The West Coast, 130. Here is a bonus question. If you were to hook up a MIDI interface, you would use a MIDI plug. How many pins are in a MIDI plug? How many pins are in a MIDI plug? This is to get you into a bonus round. Time is up. Time is up, I'm afraid. Was time up before we got that answer? Yes, time was up. OK, there are five pins. I don't know whether you're going to be right or wrong. All right, let's try another question to get them into the bonus round. <laughs> MIDI has become a standard for the interface between a computer and a musical instrument. What do the letters in MIDI stand for? All right, we have West Coast Stuart Alsop. Musical Instrument Digital Interface. All right, that does get you into a bonus round. Oh dear, I guess that's right. All right, you can get up to 30 points now. You can tie the score in this bonus round. Remember, consult John Doerr only answers. The Commodore PET computer was not named PET because it was thought of as something you keep around the house. PET is an acronym. What do the letters PET stand for? Personal Electronic Transactor. Absolutely right, 10 points. Okay. 
There's another chance of 10 more points. When using a computer, you might use a spooler. The word spool is an acronym. What do the letters stand for? <laughs> Not so easy. All right, we are going to need an answer for 10 points. Yes. Spool. S P O O L. Time out. Printer output listing. Afraid not. Afraid not. Simultaneous peripheral operations online. <laughs> You've got one more shot now. One more bonus round question for you. Who, who came up with that standard? <laughs> All right, one more chance to get 10 points now and get close. The computer language Ada was named after a person. Who was it named after? Ada, Countess of Lovelace. Correct, Ada Lovelace. 10 more points for the West. Okay, 170 for the East, 160 for the West. This <laughs> one. Here's our next toss-up question. In 1989, the Soft Letter Newsletter ranked the top 10 software companies by revenue. The top five were Microsoft, Lotus, Ashton Tate, WordPerfect, and Autodesk. Can you name at least four of the other five companies on the list? All right, we have an offer from Stuart Alsop, West Coast. Uh, Aldis, Software Publishing, uh, Borland, and uh, Electronic Arts. <laughs> I am afraid not. You will get a chance, East Coast, to answer that question. Give us four of the other five in the top ten. Who would like to take a shot at that? I need one person. And time is going to be going. Okay, Bob Frankston. Okay. Do I need to repeat the ones I already... You've got to okay. give me four out of five. Okay, Symantec, Borland... <laughs> <laughs> The obvious meaning is that Symantec is not one of them. No, I haven't that much by now. Right, let's move on. So let's move on. Next question. Give us the answer. The first. I'm sorry? Give us the answer. You want the answer. <laughs> Borland, you were very close. Software publishing. Aldous. Adobe. Logitech. Uh, I knew it. Sorry about that. Next question. We have only about two minutes left, gentlemen, in this round, so let's get going. The first issue of Dr. Dobbs' journal was devoted entirely to a single computer language. What was it? All right, we have West Coast Bill Gates. Tiny Basic. Absolutely right, 10 points. All right, 170 to 170. What was the predecessor of DBase 2 called? East Coast Frankston. Vulcan. Vulcan is right. Hey. <laughs> All right, 180 for the East, 170 for the West. Here is a big bonus question coming up. 1990 is the 100th anniversary of the U.S. Census. What famous computer pioneer? We have East Coast Foster. Herman Hollerith. Absolutely right. <laughs> okay. Here we go. We just have enough time left for this bonus round. Remember, consult. Captain answers only. You can get up to 30 points. I will ask you this question. 10 points apiece for the right answer. At least three software companies have renamed themselves after the name of their leading products. For 10 points apiece, can you name these three companies, giving me the old name and the new name? That's the end of that. Oh. <laughs> they, they, you have to get... They get they're 10 points each. You yes, have two more, yes, two yes, more right. tries. That, that one was wrong, but you get two more tries. Oh, two more tries. This is a bonus round. And Micro Pro went to WordStar. All right, that's one correct. That's 10 points. There's one more. Quickly. And uh, Cullinane uh, went to uh, Cullinate. That is not correct. I'm sorry. Okay. Let's take a look at the score. The East Coast has 200. The West Coast has 170. This is the end of round three. We'll be back in just a minute.
And welcome back to Computer Bowl 2. Now for the fourth and final round. The score right now, the East Coast has 200 points. The West Coast, it's in reach, 170 points. Rich, let's go. Okay. Some computers have become so famous in computer history that many people even know where they were developed. I'll give you the name of the location. You tell me what early computer was developed there. For 10 points, the place is Harvard. We have West Coast Tesla. Mark one. Correct for 10 points. Another toss-up question for both teams. The place is Iowa State College. We have Bill Gates on the West Coast team. And a stop bell computer. Absolutely right. Another 10 points for the West. The place was the Moore School in Philadelphia. East Coast McGovern. ENIAC. Correct. The place was Bletchley Park in England. All right, Fredkin. Colossus. East Coast, correct, Colossus. <laughs> and finally, the place was the University of Illinois. East Coast Foster. Iliac. Iliac is right. Ruth. <laughs> Big question for the East. All right, next question. Who was quoted as saying the following in Byte magazine in 1983? I wasn't thrilled with the placement of those keys, but every place you pick to put them is not a good place for somebody. The left-hand shift key is where it is because we wanted to have the character typing keys inside the control keys. Was it Steve Jobs, Don Estridge, or Rod Canyon? Frankston. Steve Jobs. West Coast, who'd like to try? We got Bill Gates. Don Estridge. Don Estridge is right, 10 points for the West. Who wrote The Mythical Man Month? We have East Coast Foster. Dr. Fred Brooks. Fred Brooks is right for the East Coast. <laughs> 240 to 200. Many successful computers have had somewhat less successful predecessors. For 10 points each, I'll name the successful computer. You name its predecessor. The Apple Macintosh. West Coast Gates. The Apple Lisa. Correct. 10 points for the West. The DEC PDP-8. West Coast Gates. The DEC PDP-5. Absolutely right, another 10 points. <laughs> the IBM 360-90. Frankston, East Coast. 360-91. The answer is the IBM Stretch. <laughs> well, that balances out the two uh, times right. that we did that. <laughs> we, we, well, that makes up for the one we did. Exactly. One years. mistake on either side. Now we're even. Okay, here is a bonus question. <laughs> this is like instant replay in football. You know. All right, East 240, West 220. Here is a bonus question that will get you into a very important bonus round. Okay. The term desktop publishing is now commonly used to describe the creation of high-quality print documents on a desktop computer. Who first... West Coast door. Paul Brainerd. Absolutely right. <laughs> All right, guys, you are 10 points behind, 240 for the East, 230 for the West. You can get up to 30 points in this bonus round. Captain only, consult. No buzz. No buzz. All right, listen. Most of us have heard the story of why we call something that interferes with the proper operation of a computer a bug. Can you tell us what computer pioneer discovered that real bug? Unanimous opinion is Grace Hopper. Ten points. Can you tell us, for another ten points, what kind of bug it was? A moth. Another ten points for the West. <laughs> Last part of the bonus round for another ten points. In what computer did she find the moth? We think it was the ENIAC. Afraid not, it was the Harvard Mark II. Well, you got 20 points. Okay, the West Coast ahead now, 250. The East Coast, 240. Look at East Coast. <laughs> yeah. All right, just a few minutes left, guys. Here we go. Another toss-up question for either team. What company owns CompuServe? East Coast Frankston. HR Block. Correct. <laughs> 250. 250. Here we go. 
The Kansas City standard was developed as a standard. West Coast door. The Tarbell tape standard. I'll repeat the question. The Kansas City standard was developed as a standard for what storage medium? Frankston. Cassette tape. Cassette tape is correct. <laughs> 270. 250. An interlaced raster scan display monitor creates a picture by interlacing odd lines and then even lines. If the full interlaced picture is called a raster, what do you call one half? West Coast Tesler. A frame. <laughs> Let me repeat the question. Repeat the question for the east. An interlaced raster scan display monitor creates a picture by interlacing odd lines and then even lines. If the full interlaced picture is called a raster, what do you call one half of those lines? Who would like to take this one on? I need one answer from one person. Quickly. We'll go for it. Fredkin. There's consulting. Half frame. I don't think we can. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong anyhow. Wrong anyhow. Out. The answer is a field. Next question. Which of the following was not the name of a computer during the 1950s? Leprechaun, Moby Dick, Babbage, or Maniac? West Coast door. Babbage. Correct. Ten points for the West. All right, the score, 270 for the East, 260 for the West. Here is an all-important bonus question. What do the letters in the word EEPROM stand for? West Coast door. Erasable, programmable, read-only memory. Correct for the West. The score is tied, 270 apiece. You can get up to 30 points for these next three questions. Only John Doerr captain answers. You may consult. Many computer companies were founded by two people. For example, Bill Gates and Paul Allen at Microsoft. For 10 points apiece, I will name the first partner. You name the second. At Digital Equipment Corporation, Ken Olson and Harlan Anderson. Correct for 10 points. The company is 3Com. Bob Metcalf and we need an answer. 3Com. Bob Metcalf and uh, Boggs. The answer is Ken Morse. Last chance for 10 points now. The company is Silicon Graphics, Jim Clark, and... <laughs> we need an answer. Time is up, I'm afraid. The answer was Ed McCracken. All right, you got 10... He was not a founder. Wrong, wrong. He was not a founder. Let's go to the judges. He was hired Wrong. Wrong. wrong answer. Wrong. He, didn't, he didn't answer the question, but Ed McCracken was not a co-founder. Okay, so our answer is wrong, your answer is wrong. We'll move on to the next question. Here's a toss-up question for either side. Computer pioneer Charles Babbage was a close friend of a famous British author who allegedly patterned, patterned a character in one of his novels after Babbage. Was the author Sir Walter Scott, John Galsworthy, or Charles Dickens? Bill Gates, West Coast. Charles Dickens. Charles Dickens is right. We only have one minute left. Let's get moving. Was the 68,000 instruction set modeled after that of the IBM 360? The data? West Coast door. The deck vax. Repeat the entire question. Repeat the question. For Was the 68,000 instruction set modeled after that of the IBM 360, the Data General Nova, or the PDP-11? Yes, McGovern? PDP-11. That's correct. It's 20 points. We are out of time. We have one question left now. The All right. Yes, this is sudden death, 290 to 290. We only have time for one more question. This is it, folks. This is it, folks. The, the judges agree. This is Here it. Here we go. This is it. The original computer game Adventure featured a colossal cave and a maze of twisty little passages. These and other memorable locations in the game were inspired by actual cave formations in what state? Was it California? Tennessee or Alaska? All right, Larry Tesler, Tennessee. West Coast. Tennessee. Tennessee is correct. <laughs> that is the end of Computer Bowl Two. The winner, the West Coast, 300. Very cool. The 290, John Doerr gets the ball. Thank you all very much for being here. We'll see you all again next year.
The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by CompuServe, which offers online information related to today's subject. Members type Go Chronicles. Non-members call for more information. Additional funding is provided by the Software Publishers Association, by PC Connection and Mac Connection, by Byte Magazine and Bix, the Byte Information Exchange, and by Intel Corporation, Personal Computer Enhancement. For a transcript of this week's Computer Chronicles, send $4 to PTV Publications, Post Office Box 701, Kent, Ohio, 44240. Please indicate program date.